Oh, this emoji movie has so much potential, I almost wanted to cry. Thank your comments because it's time for the tea. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to Tea Time with Marcellus. Welcome to my first ever movie haul. And so how I'm going to be doing my movie hauls is I'm going to be having a few movies that I've seen and then I'm going to be doing it from the least amount of tea I have on it to the most amount of tea I have on it. Y'all know what I mean? It's going to go from my least commentary to my most commentary. And so right now I have Spider-Man and then I'm going to do Girls Trip and then I'm going to do the Emoji Movie. We're going to start off with Spider-Man Homecoming because I have the least to say about it because I didn't really have any problems with it. I really loved how they did the beginning because they have Peter Parker vlogging his experience coming into Captain America Civil War. Now I think that was so cool because he's so young so we can all relate to vlogging and stuff like I have a vlog one of my first YouTube videos is a vlog of WonderCon and so vlogging was such a thing for younger people to do because we travel and we go places and we do stuff and so I think it was kind of funny to relate to millennials because he's supposed to portray as if he's like 16 15 16 because he's a freshman in high school or a sophomore in high school he's like an underclassman and so it's quite easy to relate to the whole vlogging thing and so it took a minute for his story to begin because he was vlogging for the first I think it was like the first at least like five to ten minutes of the whole um the whole movie he was vlogging and then it got up to the part where he was fighting with um Captain America and stuff and so I think it was really good I loved Zendaya in this movie I thought she was gonna have a bigger role I wish she would have had a bigger role I remember back when there was talk about her being Mary Jane and all these white people were going off Mary Jane is white with ginger hair and da -da 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 -da. just like the people who went off about their about Clementine A. Wallace being Annie oh my goodness Annie is white with ginger hair da -da -da. everybody Everybody loves talking about some historical accuracy when it comes to a black person playing a role that was originally by a white person. Like, y'all have no problem with this whitewashed and Scarlett Johansson person, but y'all have all the test problem of any black person even thinking about getting casted in a role that was that was previously a white person. Like, it just showed how racist the comic community can be because, like, it's okay for white people to whitewash, but we can't put a black person in the role of what a white person was and even then she wasn't even Mary Jane and um it's funny how they still made the love interest a black girl it I think that was like a little a little middle finger to those people they still made the love interest a black girl it just wasn't Zendaya you know what I mean and Zendaya played Melissa I'm pretty sure that her that was her name Melissa and Melissa was she was she was just an activist I loved it just her little one-liners here and there she she just basically was just there you know what i mean she was there and she was in there she didn't really play that big of a role in the movie itself like if she removed herself from the movie i'm trying to think if anything would have really changed not really but like there was a big part where she won this big decathlon for them because you guys i'm giving spoilers so melissa won the decathlon and she became the president of the debate team and that's basically all she gave to the plot line besides like being Zendaya and just being there and giving little one-liners and stuff. But I liked Melissa because she was woke. <laughs> she was woke because when they were at the um, Pentagon, she was like, I don't want to go into a building that was built on the backs of slaves. And I was like, oh my goodness, she is there. And she was always reading a book, which means she was very smart and she was an artist. So she was actually, she there was a scene where she was in detention just drawing people. She was like drawing their depressed faces and stuff. And so she was just, she was just a nice fun character to add in there you know what I mean I didn't really have any problems with Spider-Man Homecoming I loved that they were they were making fun of Captain America the whole movie it was just hilarious just seeing him popping up because like when they were in school and they had like, these different videos for like PE and the PE test and detention and stuff they had Captain America come in and do the little intros in his suit and everything so they made him like this big commercial TV star in Spider-Man Homecoming I think I like the fact that they had like the different, like they had different scenes. They made Peter Parker seem like an actual normal kid in high school. Like he went through the same problems that kids go through today. You know what I mean? Peter Parker was very, very, very relatable. And not to mention Tom Holland is amazing. He was, Peter Parker was just one of the most relatable Spider-Man characters 
to, to to this day, I feel like he was the most relatable to me because I'm young too. And like I said with that vlogging thing, that's what pulled me in because who doesn't love a good vlog? You know what I mean? And it's a Spider-Man vlog. He's vlogging about him being Spider-Man. I think it was just great. I love the movie. I don't really have any complaints about it. And so that's going to move me on to Girls Trip. That's the next thing. The next T is Girls Trip. Now, I always wanted to see Girls Trip ever since I saw it because I have this theory. And this theory is... Every time there's a movie and there's a plot line, there's going to be a white version of the movie and then a black version of the movie. Now, when Girl Ship came out, I thought of that movie where those four white girls were going on what this honeymoon thing, this bachelorette party, whatever, and it came out and nobody liked it. But then Girl Ship comes out and everybody's loving it. You know what I mean? Like Atomic Blonde and Proud Mary. They're both assassins. But like you have Tarash B. Henson over here. And then you have that other chick over here in Atomic Blonde. But it's kind of the same plot line. You know what I mean? I don't know. I've been noticing that. Like whenever there's a plot, they always have a white version and black version. And so I'm just like, hmm, what are they doing that for? And I'm like, that does appeal to all audiences, to be honest. And it's almost like I feel like since black people can't get cast in these white versions, then they just make their own version that usually sometimes outsells the white version. Like, I'm just, I've just been noticing that. Like, like, look at that. Like, whenever there's a plot line, just look at when they come out, because they come out around the same time as well. So there's like always a white cast and then a black cast. I've noticed that, and Girl Ship was no different. Like, the Girl Ship was a black cast, and of course, I loved it. It was so funny. However, my one thing with Girl Ship was that it was very predictable. Now, that could just be me, because I can clock T that fast, but I was watching it, and I was texting my friend and stuff afterwards, and I was like, did the movie seem predictable? As it did, it seem predictable because with me, from the moment I sat in the chair, because, you know, I was late because the movie theater put the wrong times on their website. But I missed, like, only the first, like, 30, 35 seconds of it or whatever. But I could catch on real quick. So I sat there and I predicted. I was like, Ryan and her husband have a fake marriage. And I was like, I already know it. I was like, it's, I know. And then we have Ryan. And so Ryan was just, I just clocked the tea early on. Like, and then when the girl who um, Ryan's husband was cheating on her with got pregnant, I did that too. Like, me and my friend were sitting in the back row just clocking all the tea with Ryan. And then we went over to Sasha and her storyline. And when Sasha was, uh, she was a blogger. You know, she had this blog and she was basically like a celebrity gossip blog. And so I was like, hmm, that's going to come into play because there's going to be scandalous things about Ryan and her marriage and Sasha is going to possibly report it and Sasha's going to know the tea, you know what I mean? Because Sasha has a first-hand tea because they're all getting together for a girl's trip. Ryan is now big and successful and she now has the money to treat all of her friends, the Flossy Posse, to a trip. They're all going to New Orleans for this, um, I think it was the Essence Festival, I think, that Ryan was a keynote speaker at. And so they're all getting together. And so I was like, they're going to find out some tea. And Sasha's going to possibly report the tea. But then Lisa and Dina, they didn't really have tea to clock. You know what I mean? They didn't really have tea to clock. But I loved this movie in general, though it was so predictable. It was just very, very, very predictable. Like, I predicted everything that was going to happen. But that didn't make it any less interesting. You know what I mean? Because of Dina. Tiffany Haddish. Oh my goodness, she made this movie. Let me tell you, between me just laughing at the fact how short Jada Pinkett Smith is, because she was just so short, and I didn't realize how short she was until I saw her with everybody else, and then Tiffany Haddish, she was just so funny. She's a comedian, and nobody has really heard of her that much before this movie, but she made this movie. Like, I'm telling you right here and now, if anybody else played Dina, the movie would not have been as dynamic as it was. It wouldn't have been nearly as funny, and it would have been way less interesting because you never knew what Dina was going to do. Dina was a loose cannon. Dina was a loose cannon, and she just said what she wanted to say, did what she wanted to do, and had no cares about it. Dina was that girl. And I just loved her character all together because it was so funny. She is what made this a comedy. Like, I feel like, really, if we took Dina as a whole out of the movie, I would not have enjoyed it. I really wouldn't have, because the storyline to me was just so predictable. But that doesn't make it bad, you know what I mean? It just makes it 
predictable. Like, Rotten Tomatoes gave it at 87. And I'm like, yeah, I can get with that because that's like a B plus, you know, a B plus almost close to an A, but it's not there because there was no twists and turns. You know what I mean? There was no twists and turns for us to go on. Maybe it's just because, maybe it's just me. It could easily just be me. And I'm good at predicting like that. I'm good at foreshadowing. But the storyline was just predictable. However, there was a scene in the club. And I was not expecting this scene in the club. That was the only thing that hit me by surprise. There was a dance-off. There was a white chicks dance-off. Y'all remember white chicks? And they were dancing to Crazy in Love. And they had that dance-off. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, no, no. They had a dance off in the club. And they had, like, it was basically younger girls against the older girls. And so we got the young girls over here moving and grooving. And then they started twerking. And I got very upset because I was like, you couldn't get any background dancers that could actually twerk. If you're going to twerk, please do it correctly. Like, they won't move in nothing but backs. And I was like, this is so disgraceful. And I was like, maybe they meant to do that. Maybe that's supposed to be a thing so that the older generation could win. Because Ryan, Lisa, Sasha, and T Dina. I think it was Dina. Yeah. I think I forgot. I forgot all their names all together. All of them were schooling them. They had on some wigs. And they went in there and just showed them choreography. They showed y'all what a cohesive group looks like. Because they just gave y'all choreo. So maybe the younger generation was supposed to look a hot mess. Because it just was all over the place. However, let me tell y'all. Those outfits were amazing. I loved the costuming for this movie. I loved it. I loved all the costumes, the dresses. Especially with... um. The girl who Ryan's husband was cheating on her with. I really forgot her name. I really feel like her name is Simone. It was Simone. Okay, I was right. My memory served me correct. Because I was like, I don't know who it is. And I thought her name was Simone. Her name is Simone. Okay, we're good. So Simone was looking right. Let me tell y'all. Simone was looking good. Her outfits, her body. She was just looking good. Simone has some audacity though. Me and my friend were getting so mad because she was like, Simone has so much potential to make so much money from the pregnancy she had with Ryan's husband, she should have waited. But instead, she wanted TMZ money. But she could have had some big bank because Ryan and her husband were going to get a big TV deal. They were going to get a TV show. Even though their marriage is fake and Ryan wrote a whole book about their marriage, but they were just like, you know, they weren't connecting anymore. They were done. They were just together for the camera. And they were going to get this big movie deal. I mean, big TV show deal. And they were going to have bank. They were going to make bank. Simone should have known that and waited until they got the deal for her to reveal that she's pregnant so she can get bank. She could have made so much money. She could have been a millionaire. But no, she wanted TMZ money. She just, I just, mm, it made me upset because I was like, she had, she could have capitalized. But of course, it was just written another way. And I was just like, I said, she has so much potential. She had so much potential. But altogether, I did like this movie, but as I said, Dina and Tiffany Haddish, she made the movie. She really did because the plot line, it wasn't dry. The plot line wasn't dry at all, especially when it was like New Orleans and they had like all the different Mardi Gras stuff going on. And like, it was like, just, it was lit. But the storyline itself just wasn't all there. But the comedy from Dina and them fighting and all of this stuff and their adventures and stuff, the comedy is what brought it together. You know what I mean? The com If it wasn't a comedy, sh if it wasn't a comedy, then I don't know what I would have did in that movie theater. I was like, this, I was just like, it was predictable, but I was still laughing my tail off. I was hurting when I was leaving because that's how funny it was to me. I was just, I was just laughing the whole time. And it was just like the humor was unpredictable, but the plot line was. But I mean, it's a give and take, you know what I mean? It's a give and take. And so I really did like this movie. And so, so now we're going to move on to the Emoji movie. Now, this movie has so much potential when I looked at it. Like, when I first saw it, like, the commercials and stuff for the trailers, I was like, this movie is not going to be good. And I was low-key, right? And I was just looking, I was like, I don't want to see this movie. However, we wanted to go to the movies and there was nothing else to see. It was either that or, like, War of the Planet Apes and I didn't even see Dawn of the Planet Apes. I just saw the Rise of the Planet Apes, I think. And then that was it. So I would have been so lost if I would have saw that movie. And so I, so we went and saw Emoji Movie. Now... The emoji movie plotline is basically this this um, emoji with his name is Gene and he's a meh emoji. He's like that that straight face emoji, whatever. And he is a malfunction. He has a malfunction. He has all emotions. And so 
he has all emotions and the emojis are like in this whole different world in the inside the app and he messes up when it's his turn to become his emoji when he's supposed to give a mad face and be scanned and put up there he didn't do all that he was like all straight face or whatever he was doing all bad stuff and so this was about him trying to go and get reprogrammed to be a mad emoji because he was going to get deleted. He was going to get deleted because he wasn't, he was a malfunction. And so he wasn't, you know, he wasn't doing what he was supposed to be doing in the emoji world. And so they talked about how there was this princess emoji, the original princess emoji, jailbreak. They, um, they said she went and she got reprogrammed. And so they say, if you go find jailbreak, jailbreak is the one who transformed the princess to be in the cloud and be wherever she wanted to be. She didn't have to go and live in the emoji world. And so he, he was accompanied by High Five. The hand emoji was played by James Corden. And so they all go through the phone. They're going through the phone and they have to hurry up because the phone's malfunctioning because of what Gene's doing and High Five is what the, he's doing. And so now the owner of the phone wants to wipe the phone clean and then they're all going to be deleted and this, that, and the other. So on in this movie, let me just start from my problem with like the just the overall problem they were trying to be they used too much modern day vernacular if that's what i mean like in the middle of the movie you just hear you hear jailbreak saying slay and i'm like what was that I'm like, what is going on? And then you have like high five being like hashtag bless this, that, and the other swag. And they just didn't, they, okay. To be honest, they were using too much black vernacular. <laughs> if I'm going to be too real, they're using too much black vernacular. And most black vernacular comes from the black LGBT people. So black LGBT vernacular and black vernacular in general was used too much in this movie and i just didn't appreciate all of it because i'm just like i don't think not many people in this cast was actually of color besides um sofia vergara and i'm gonna get on that in a, in a minute because that made me upset and so i was just like there was too much black vernacular in this movie for there to be not black people however jailbreak was black jailbreak wasn't white she was a black she was a black person because she was um a, the, a lighter skin black emoji even though the original princess wasn't black they made jailbreak black anyway so in the movie jailbreak turned it out to be the princess so the princess turned into a hacker that could reprogram stuff and reprogram people so that she could be whoever she wanted to be and a line that stuck with me that she said was that when emojis first came out all a girl could be was a princess or a bride. I wanted to be something else. So I did. And so that's why I became a hacker. So I could try and become something else. And so Gene needed to get reprogrammed so he could be a man. But then Jailbreak needed somebody to get through the firewall. Because Gene has so, all sorts of emoji faces and stuff. He can say different passwords with each emoji face. And if it's wrong, he can just redo it. And so they both needed each other so that they could get what they wanted. And so they finally get in or whatever. They get into the, um, they get into the firewall. And so we have high five getting kidnapped. So high five got kidnapped by these bots that were sent to get them because they all have to get deleted and this that, and the other. And so high five got kidnapped and taken away. And Gene is like, we have to go get them. And then jailbreak is like, I've, I've been waiting for this my whole life. I'm trying to get reprogrammed. I'm trying to go. If we leave, we can't come back. And I'm just and she was like, I'm not trying to go and save him when I can go and do what I'm supposed to be doing. You know what I mean? And then also, Gene, of course, had a crush on Jailbreak. Of course, they had to add love into this. And so Gene was just like, come with me. We can be together and this and the other. And she was like, I have my own plans in my life. I have my own plans. Like... I have plans and I'm not going to let, and she basically said, I have plans and I'm not going to let some man who I've met for all of three days come in and ruin what I've been working my whole life for. And in the movie theater, I was like, yes, I was like, yes, because that was the whole thing. Like the, people didn't see it the way I saw it, but she was going to compromise her whole life plan for some guy she just met. And I was talking about how that happens so much today, how people have to compromise their whole entire life for their significant other and i'm just like why would you compromise your whole entire life for somebody you just met 
And so I was like, yes, this is about to be the feminist movie of 2017. Because I was like, oh my goodness, she is about to literally be like, no, I have plans. And you are literally going to put a corkscrew in the middle of my plans. And I was like, yes, yes, yes. I was like, yes. I was so excited that she wasn't going, that there wasn't going to be a love story. I was so excited because there's always a love interest. Always. So I was excited that they were going to shut that down. But I was wrong. She left the firewall. She went back and helped Jean rescue High Five. And they went back and retook over the whole emoji world. And everybody found out that Jailbreak was really the princess. And they're like, oh, princess, oh, princess. Ah. And so in the end, Jailbreak did become, I think she became like the person who like was over the emoji world. She was like the technician person over the emoji world, which was okay, I guess. But like, I was just, I was pressed because I was like, this has so much potential to be one of those like movies where it's like, you don't need a man to succeed. You don't need this. You don't need that. You know what I mean? Because Gene really at that time had nothing to offer her. He didn't have nothing to offer her. She became a hacker. She could reprogram herself and everybody in the emoji world to be what they wanted to be. And that's what she wanted to do. She was like, that's why I, that line just always sticks with me. When I was a first emoji, anything a girl could be was a princess or a bride and I wanted neither. She didn't want either of them. She was like, I wanted to be something new. Because y'all know how the new emojis, they all have occupations now that that have the male and the female. Because she was just like, when the emojis first came out, all I could be was a bride or a princess. And that was like so big to me because I'm just like, that's so true. And that's how society sees women. It's like, you're either a bride or you're a princess. You can't be this. You can't be an engineer. You can't be a technician. You can't be this. You can't be that. They're like seen as petite and feminine. And this and the other. And Jailbreak was like, I'm not for that. I'm not all about that. She was like, I want to be something different. So I'm going to find out how to make myself different. And I'm going to reprogram myself to be something different. And then she threw all that away for a dude. That just really, it upset me so much because I'm just like, why did they have her compromise her whole life plan for a dude? They couldn't have even had to where she reprogrammed herself to be in the cloud or whatever. And then Jean can go up there and live with her or something. No, they had her leave the cloud, go all the way back down to Emoji Land or whatever they were, and then fix everything. And then she's like just the technician of the whole Emoji world. And I was like, it's okay. I guess. All right. But guess what? Rotten Tomatoes gave this movie a 6%. Ooh, a 6%. And I can see why. Because without any of that, the movie wasn't that good. It really wasn't. It just wasn't that good. I had low expectations coming in. But then when I saw, like, Jailbreak and the whole plot line, like, going with her, like, getting over the fact that they used so much black vernacular and LGBT vernacular, and they didn't give any of the credit to any of them anyway. So I'm just like, okay, that would have been, that would have set the movie off. Even though the movie was horrible altogether, that would have set it off. Jailbreak not having a love interest. She... They forced a love interest on her, and she pushed it away. That would have made this movie actually something to look at. You know what I mean? Because that is in every movie. There's always a love interest. Always, always, always. And I'm like, why can't we have a movie where there's no love interests? Now, like, I just, I just didn't get it. I didn't understand it. And another thing that really got me was that Sofia Vergara, there was the flamenco dancer. The flamenco dancer in the movie. And at the end of the movie, they like actually got a close up on her. And I told my friend, I said, wait, is this flamenco dancer white? Because when I looked at this flamenco dancer, I saw no melanin. I saw no melanin. I was like, why is she white? Flamenco dancers are Hispanic. They're Latinas. They're Latinos. They're flamenco dancers. They're not white. And I was like, this flamenco dancer is white. And I was like, wait, what's going on? I like had this whole rant in the car about it because I got so mad because the flamenco dancer was white passing. And I was like, so who voiced it? So I'm like in there and I saw the credits and this is Sofia Vergara. And I said, wait, 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 wait. So they got a Latina woman to play the flamenco dancer. She wasn't even a big role. She just had a few lines here and there. But you couldn't make the flamenco dancer even the littlest bit look Latina I was so 
upset because I went the whole movie without even noticing the flamenco dancer was white or white passing. And I'm just like, I got so used to it. That's the bad thing. Like, we get so used to whitewashing that we just are desensitized about it. And I'm just like, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that they had the audacity to make a flamenco dancer white. And I was like, y'all have all these emojis of all different shades and colors and stuff. Like, I saw the dark-skinned princess in the movie. She was she didn't have lines or whatever. And then, but they had the dark-skinned emoji, the dark-skinned princess emoji in there. They had the dark-skinned nose, I think. And they had they had a little bit of black diversity in there but like for y'all to have this flamenco dancer and for Sofia Vergara to have her name in the credits before the even before the actual long credits roll up she was like one of those names that popped up by itself and you couldn't even make the flamenco dancer the littlest bit look latina what is the problem with representation nowadays? I don't understand. Just like Madame Tussauds and her Beyonce figure. Why is Beyonce white passing? These people are not white. Why are we trying to make them seem white? I don't get that. I don't understand that. Like, Beyonce isn't white. Sofia Vergara is not white. Why are their characters white? Why are they white? There should be no question in my mind if that's, is that white? Is that a white woman? No, I shouldn't have to sit here and question it because it shouldn't be that way. You need to make a Latino flamenco dancer a Latina flamenco dancer because I've seen flamenco shows. I've seen flamenco shows. I've been to Spain and I've seen flamenco shows. My hotel had a, its own flamenco show. There aren't no white girls in the flamenco shows. They're all from Spain. They're all Spanish girls. They're all Latina girls. They're all not white. And for y'all to actually have the audacity to have a Latina person voice this flamenco dancer and actually not make the character itself Latina, it's just really trash. It's really trash. And so like at the end of this movie, when I saw the flamenco dancer was actually white, I said, you know what? This movie is trash. I was so upset and disappointed that's why i said they had so much potential because they just ruined it they just had so much potential because of how this was set up this was set up as a typical love story and jailbreak could have ended that jailbreak could have just stopped it and went on about her business and then possibly came back after she did what she wanted to do but no they had her re-compromise her whole plan of life for Jean. And then, of course, it's like a happy ending and stuff. But I'm just like, why would they do that when they had so much? You know, like, I just thought of Cheetah Girls when I saw Jailbreak. Because I'm just like, you know, the Cheetah Girls, they represented feminism back then. They were talking about, I can slay my own dragon. I can dream my own dreams. My knight in shining armor is me. They were talking about, they don't want to be Cinderella. They have girl power. They are all women. And they can do whatever they want because they are women. And they can do it. You know what I want? You know what I mean? Like, this had such potential. And then they ruined the potential with going with the typical stories. And that's why this movie is not doing that well. And it won't do that well because it's not something that's different. You know what I mean? Like, I can literally look up this plot line and it'll be in so many other different movies that have already came out. Like, I can find a live action one. I can find a animated one. I can find one that's probably a play. Like, so this, this plot line is just so overused. It's so overused where like the boy meets girl, girls trying to help guy. They both have an agreement and then in the end, they both, in the end, the woman compromises her agreement to be with the guy or the guy compromises his agreement to be with the girl. It's usually the other way around though. I'm not pretty sure. I'm pretty sure there's not a lot of things where the guy compromises his agreement to be with the girl or they both like, or they both just give up whatever they wanted to be with each other and stuff. And I'm just like, what kind of feelings do people get in such a short amount of time that makes them want to compromise or whole life like i'm just selling love is such a strong thing i guess but this movie could have been so much better it could have been so much more but it wasn't and it's very 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 upsetting like this whole movie in general just upset me it just upset me as a person i just couldn't stand it i just couldn't stand they have the audacity to pull that like it just could have been so much better and it could have done better, but it didn't. That's why it doesn't even have a 10% on Rotten Tomatoes. It has like a 1.5 out of 10 stars because that's just how bad it was. It just wasn't good altogether, and I'm over it. 
and so that is all I have for this movie haul. I'm currently already planning my next movie haul. Maybe this is something I can do once a month. I like see a whole bunch of movies and then review them at the end of the month or the beginning of the next month. I'm looking at seeing Dark Tower. I'm looking at seeing Detroit. I'm gonna find another third movie for this month and maybe that's something I can do. I can see at least one or two movies a month and you know give you the tea on those at the next month. You know let's stay tuned for that. Don't forget to follow my Twitter, my Instagram, and don't forget my claws reviews are on and popping. They are coming on between Monday and Wednesdays because claws come on Sundays. I got to get time to digest it. I got to get my notes together and I got to give you all the tea you need to know. Don't forget to check out all of my other videos and I will see you guys next week and until then with sass class and a little pizzazz. Bye.